In this video, we're going to talk about some of the reasons you should not buy a heat pump, and better said, we will cover a few reasons that should not be the deciding factors for why you do or don't buy a heat pump for your home. The bottom line is that things like the Inflation Reduction Act and the Green Movement have made more and more people talk about heat pumps, and although I love heat pumps and our company installs a ton of heat pumps, if you get talked into buying the wrong kind or don't do your research first, you can end up with a piece of equipment that either doesn't meet your needs or was the wrong purchase because it wasn't the best option for your situation. And if you're tuning into the channel for the first time, at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video about ear ratings and seer ratings. So make sure you check that out at the end if you haven't done so already, because it is pertinent to this point as well, if you're looking for a heat pump for efficiency reasons. Now, the first reason not to buy a heat pump is rebates. Now, I am probably one of the only contractors not pitching people on rebates, but the fact of the matter is that in most municipalities, the rebates are pretty pathetic and also disincentivize you from purchasing a better heat pump in all explain what I'm talking about shortly. This is going to be very region specific, but the bottom line is that oftentimes rebates as an incentive can be misleading and they should not be the primary driving factor in your decision making process. Because if you happen to live in a municipality or utility area that has an attractive rebate that is not limited by ear or seer ratings and by all means take advantage. But oftentimes the rebates and tax credits, for example, that are available are not that great or are misleading to be quite frank. For example, our primary utility provider in Colorado is Excel Energy, and they have the reputation of not allowing rebates on some of our most efficient systems like the Daikin Fit and VRF technology. And although they might change this next year or the following year, it has been an uphill battle trying to get them to approve it. And this is because their rebate guidelines are based entirely on SEER and EAR and HSPF ratings. But the truth is that these ratings are not all created equal, and EAR is a perfect example of this. And this is because they rate inverters using the same scale that they rate a single stage system. But unfortunately, that's not how inverters work and that's not how they gain the most of their efficiency. Now, I talk about this in another video, so I'm not going to do a deep dive on those ratings, but the bottom line is that rebates should not be your number one motivating factor or driving the decision-making process on which system you choose for your home. Now, number two reason is because you think heat pumps are going to save the planet. Now, I'm not trying to get political here or get people pissed off, but I'm going to elaborate on this further to explain explain my point that's it. If you simply put an electric piece of equipment on the grid, like an electric car, it actually doesn't reduce your carbon footprint unless you specify and pay for clean energy from your utility provider. But the fact remains that the majority of energy on our grid right now is produced by coal and fossil fuels. So if you think that using a heat pump is better for the planet because you're not using natural gas, or you're just using less natural gas because you still might have a gas stove, for example, the short answer is that's only true if you're dictating or you're able to dictate what type of energy you want your utility rider to use. For example, with Excel Energy, there's a little box that you can check on your bill and it's actually only one or two cents more per kilowatt hour. But when you check it, it dictates that Excel Energy's customers, you have to buy renewable energy off of the grid to offset your usage. So that if you use a thousand kilowatt hours in a month and you pay an extra two cents because you check that box, uh, which is actually only $20 when you do the math in this instance, then okay, you can rest easy knowing that you powered 100% of your home with clean energy, even though you don't have solar panels on your roof, for example. But keep in mind that not all utilities offer this option or the option to purchase clean electricity. So if you think that electric is better than natural gas, although I would agree because some of the methods used to harvest natural gas are controversial at best, then that is a somewhat valid point. But if your heat pump is powered by coal, it will not be as efficient or as good for the environment as you think. Again, regardless of what your stance is or where you are in the spectrum, the unfortunate truth is that in recent years, this has become a less scientific topic and a more political on topic, which is unfortunate because it's actually preventing us from using some of the better technology and some of the better better power solutions that are available out there, like nuclear power, for example. And my point is, if you are planning on using solar panels on your home or you are buying clean energy off the grid, then have at it by all means. But if your motivation is to save the planet and buy a heat pump, just know it's a little more complicated than that at face value. So do your research before making that plunge. And the third reason to not buy a heat pump is it actually might not make sense for your region, depending on the circumstances. Now we'll have another video linked at the end, like I mentioned 
mentioned earlier that talks about efficiency ratings, but there's another video on our channel that talks about dual fuel systems, which we will also link because depending on the region that you live in, there's certain regions that don't work well with heat pumps as a primary source of heat. Sometimes a dual fuel system can be a great option though in these areas. And the truth is that most heat pumps nowadays, even the basic ones can run down into single digit low temperatures in Fahrenheit and low ambient heat pumps are rated to perform in temperatures down to as low as negative 10 Fahrenheit. But if you happen to live in a climate like a lot of our Canadian subscribers where you regularly have months on end below negative 20 Fahrenheit in this instance, a dual fuel system where you have backup heat from a furnace is probably going to make a lot more sense. Now it is also true that ground source heat pumps can perform better in these types of climates as well. So you can consider running a ground loop if you live in one of these climates, but that is different than an air source heat pump and not something we're talking about in this video, just because it's a little bit more complex than a typical air source heat pump. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So hopefully you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as promised earlier, right now, there's a few videos popping up on the screen that you can watch if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.